seriously? Hello, and welcome to yet another, I wouldn't call this a lesson, but this is just an experiment with seriously, English for Brazilians. My name is Josh Cashel. This little vlog, video blog, is um, a little treat for my viewers. I'm going to show you something that is dear to my heart in two special ways. One, it's my son, oh, Mikael. He is today uh, almost seven years old, but in this video, I'm going to edit, there are two videos, and I'm going to show you a little bit about something that we don't see very often, a little thing called bilingualism. Bilingualism, and that, the definition of bilingualism, bilingualism, if you can say it, is being able to speak two or more languages fluently. Bi meaning two, you can be multilingual, multilingualism, you're speaking more than two languages. And uh, here in Brazil, um, and specifically in America, it doesn't happen as often as we might think it does. And actually in the world, bilingualism and multilingualism is the norm. Um, a lot of cultures, a lot of countries, especially those countries that are still uh, developing, they have a lot of tribal situations where uh, different tribes may speak five or six different languages to be able to communicate. In America, for example, the vast, vast majority of people speak only English. There's a large number of Hispanic immigrants that have come in, uh, first generation, second generation um, children of immigrants, who uh, have lost Spanish and speak only English. But um, throughout America, most of the people speak only one language. I have had the opportunity as an American living here in Brazil to see my son grow up in a multicultural, multilingual situation, a multilingual context. And I've seen him grow and learn both languages at the same time. And it's an amazing thing to watch as an English teacher how the two languages come together, mix, overlap, uh, interfere with each other, and um, you get this crazy hodgepodge of communication. And a lot of people have asked me to, to put something up about uh, talking about myself, living here in Brazil. And when I came here, the first day I ever came to Brazil, I did not speak a word of Portuguese. I consider myself today bilingual. I can speak English and Portuguese interchangeably with relative ease and fluency, so I would consider myself bilingual. Uh, I learned Portuguese while I was here with my wife, who was then my girlfriend. We were living in sin before we were married. Um, I spoke English to her initially, and as I learned Portuguese, and she spoke English to me, and as I learned Portuguese, I slowly incorporated that into our communication. And today, my wife mostly speaks English, English with me, unless she's upset, and then she switches back into Portuguese and yells at me in, in Portuguese, which is fine. Um, but my son, he, his first language is Portuguese. Within his, his context here, multiculturally, his main language is Portuguese. He does everything at school in Portuguese. His friends are all Brazilians uh, who speak Portuguese together. And, uh, but at home, everything he watches on TV and with me exclusively, I speak English with him. And so you have this very interesting mix of languages. And I'm going to show you again, as I said, two videos so you can see really clearly how bilingualism works and how, as I talk about a lot in, in my videos, how interference affects your second language acquisition and, and communication. And this first video is a very uh, short clip, about 30 seconds. We were sitting at the table at our house and he's telling a story about what he's going to do. And shenanigans ensue. So we're going to watch this first one, and then we're going to watch another one where you're going to see just how fluidly the two languages mix. 
And because he speaks with me uh, exclusively, or I speak with him exclusively in English, he speaks to me in whatever comes first to his mind. And this is how bilingualism works. And it's very fascinating. So I'm going to stop talking now, and I'm going to show you this first video, and then we're going to break it down a little bit so you can understand what's going on on a linguistic level. Okay? Enjoy! What are you going to do? I will put the two tomatoes in my mouth. Oh. Now put them, spit it back in like you did with your face halfway on the. This is the brown that you have. No, this is the rest of the mom that exists in these four. Well, apart from appalling table manners, um, a funny little video, uh, letting a child be a child, but linguistically, what's going on? We have two languages, and which is called bilingualism when they're they're used interchangeably like this. And what happens is it's very interesting. Bilingualism. In bilingualism, you must follow the rules of the grammatical rules of the individual languages. So you cannot break the 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 fixed grammatical rules between the languages. If you are beginning a sentence in, for example, like we saw here, papai, vou botar dois, that's, he begins that sentence in Portuguese. He continues it in, within the Portuguese structure, but he's using English words. So you can't break the grammatical uh, structure of those two languages. So papai, vou botar dois, what? Tomatoes, where? In my mouth. Uh, the grammatical structures switch there ch -ch -ch between dois and then tomatoes in my mouth, and he finishes it fluidly, uh, fluently, and very disgustingly as he puts those tomatoes in his mouth. Now, the next video we're going to see, we are uh, in our home in the mountains, and in the background you see my dog Penny, Penelope. And she's very curious about what's going on. And on this day, we were going to Le Canton to do some skiing. And I was under the impression that it was actually going to be cold. So I put my son in his skiing clothes, his cold weather clothes. And he, we're talking about what we're going to do. And he goes into his explanation of his clothing and uh, where we're going. Okay, so enjoy this. Yep. Today I'm going to ski in the snow, and then I'm super hot, <laughs> and then I'm going to ski in the snow, and your shoes is a stay. I know. Show, show me all your equipment. What do you got on your hands? Gloves. Okay, but those... Shark. Shark gloves. And on your hat? On your head? Uh, a baby lion. Okay. And then on your... You got a, a, a vest on, a cool vest. You got some... W with, cold weather pants. With one tree. Okay, and your shoes? Anything? Ah, e o meu, minha camiseta do Mario. Okay, your Mario Brothers shirt. Mario Bros. E meu boot de fireman. E meu e meu saco de Flamengo. Meu meu short de de futebol. And who gave you these sh those pants? Kevin. That's right. You're all set. Let's do it. And who gave me this? Grandma! <laughs> and this? Grandma! And this? Grandma! He was telling a story. He was very excited. And he was telling a story about what he was going to do. And he was talking about the clothing that he was wearing. And you can see, if, and if you can read the subtitles there, he switches in and out of the languages very fluidly with no real uh, motive or there's no distinguishing reason why he'll switch from one language to the other except that you can do that if you know two languages fluently. And the first thing that he talks about is uh, an interesting thing. He's telling a sequence of events. And he says, and then, and then, and then. He does that also 
in Portuguese. And I believe, as I've said before, Portuguese is his strongest language. So fundamentally, the, the foundation of everything he says is in Portuguese, and he just substitutes English words for the Portuguese grammar. So he says, and then, and then, which is basically, yair, yair. And that's, that's not necessarily the, the most natural way to do it in English. You might use some other sequential markers, like, and after, and, uh, and so, but he repeats those, and he does that actually in Portuguese, which is interesting. Um, and then he says, you don't see it, and luckily, but my shoes were falling apart, and I had put duct tape, silver tape, around them to hold them together. And he says, and your shoes are with tape. In English, you would never say, your shoes are with tape. You would say something like, you have tape on your shoes, or you've wrapped your shoes in tape. Your shoes are with tape, is Portuguese. O seu sapato está com fita, está com adesivo, adesivo. So the structure, the basic structure foundation is Portuguese with English words. It's kind of cool. Um, and then he goes on, he talks about his hat, or he talks about his gloves. He says, he calls them gloves sharks, which, if you look at it, is Portuguese. Luvas de tubarão. Luvas, gloves, sharks. So he's mixed them up, and you can hear me kind of correct him, and that's basically my job. I want to make sure that he gets the correct input to work out these little differences. So he says, gloves, sharks. Um, he's very proud of his gloves, sharks. It should be shark, gloves. Singular shark, that's the adjective. What kind? Shark, what? Gloves. And then you have the plural. And then he's talking about his vest. Now, he says his vest has one tree. Yes, there is one tree. But if you're talking about uh, the number of something specifically being one, then you say there is one tree. But if you're just talking about uma árvore, which in his mind is what he's doing, I believe, you might translate that into one tree. While the natural way to say it in English is a tree. There is a tree on my vest. So again, we see the foundation of his language is, English, or is Portuguese, and he's substituting it with English. Um, and then he goes on, what does he say? He talks about, ah yes, his boots, de fireman. Boots, de fireman is about as Portuguese structure as you can get. Botas de bombeiro. Boots, G, fireman. So in three words, he's used the grammatical structure, botas de bombeiro, but he's substituted the English word, boots de fireman. And in English, they would be fireman boots. You switch those around, fireman boots. And then, of course, he's wearing meias do Flamengo, which he says, socks de Flamengo. And you'll notice that he puts it into the, the masculine because his word that he's looking for, socks, in English, we don't have gender. So he's, in Portuguese, neutered that word. It becomes masculine. Meus socks de Flamengo. My flamingo socks. Which, is, which would be the natural way to say that in English. And then he talks about his shorts de football, which are football, American football pants, um, which weren't shorts, they're pants, but he uses the Portuguese structure with English words. And then he, he says in very fluent English, you know who bought this? Grandma! You know, and, and this? Grandma! Very fluent uh, switch back into English. So that was just a little breakdown, a fun kind of romp through uh, what I get to experience on a daily basis. And a lot of people have asked me if I'm worried that my son will mix up all of these languages. And I answer them, no, I'm not worried, because I know that the process of bilingualism, second language acquisition, in his context is going to be fine. 
he'll be confused for a while, but he's actually really good at separating the two languages when he needs to. He never speaks to his Brazilian friends in English. And in the States, when he speaks to his family in, in, in English, he has on occasion come to me to ask how to say something in English because he's not sure of the vocabulary, but he's always talking to them in English. So he separates the languages very cleanly. But when he's talking to me, he knows he can communicate with me in whatever way he wants. So he just, blah, 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 blah. he'll spit it out, he'll change, he'll move things around, but it will be clear and understandable in both uh, languages. So it's just neat. And, I, and I'm, I'm expecting interesting things as he grows older. And uh, if I have other interesting things that I think are interesting to share, I'll do that with you. And hopefully um, I'll have another interview with him. He's, uh, I've asked him if he wants to, and he seems um, interested in doing that. So hopefully I can sit him down for a longer, more uh, fulfilling interview. So I'm going to stop talking now. I tend to talk a lot. So I'm going to say thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed. And subscribe, like, do all that stuff, tell your friends, send me a comment, and uh, I'll see you next time, okay? Bye-bye.